Hi, my name is Aruna Surya, and I'm a contributor to BISC. BISC is a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange. I am here with Manfred Carrere, who founded BISC. And today we're going to talk about the compensation requests and the voting process. But before that, Manfred is going to show you uh, the, how the compensation request process is done in the developer mode of the BISC app. Manfred. Yeah, thank you. I will switch to screen sharing one second. Um, yeah, as Aruna said, we have uh, here a local developer mode. <clears throat> Any developer can use this as well. The documentation how to do this is in our docs folder on the in the where the code is. <clears throat> and <clears throat> it's basically just a local Bitcoin network which is used for development purposes where you can create blocks on your own and you don't have to wait for the miner for creating a new block and so on. Because when I would show it on the current testnet, at the moment we are in the vote reveal phase. I can show it here. So that's the testnet version. And we are in this vote reveal phase, so you cannot make a request because you only can make compensation requests or other re uh, request proposals in the proposal phase. So only in those two days you can do this. Then there are two days for voting. We have also passed this already, so you cannot do voting. So uh, yeah, when we would have been there, you could change here the vote and can send your transaction. But um, here I only see my own votes, what I've voted and the transaction and uh, how much BSQ I've used for voting. <laughs> And the next phase, will, the interesting will be then the vote result in one or two days where we see then the real results. And we can see this in the old, as in the past, we have already one cycle done. And here we see the results from the last voting. So you can, uh, on every request, uh, you can uh, select here, like here is a compensation request. And then you see all the details, who has done it, the link to the GitHub issue and so on. And then you see every vote. So from uh, everybody who has voted here, you see the individual votes. Someone has rejected it, the other has accepted it, and you have ignored it. And that was their voting weight. Mm -hmm. And so you see all the details. There are some other proposals like removing Bitcoin Cash, or bonded role, changing a parameter, and so on. So we tried out our different proposal types, uh, different uh, contributors. And so that's the testnet DAO where everybody's invited to participate. And for demonstration purpose, I use here, let's close this. Mm -hmm. I use here this REC test, it's called. Mm -hmm. And I can uh, have also a local Bitcoin Core wallet running where I can create new blocks with, in the command line with generate. I create a new block, what usually is done by the miners. So just a little bit of background to understand the setup. And I have here two clients. Uh, mm -hmm just to see a little bit how it looks for the other client. Um, so yeah, let's assume we are in this proposal phase here. I have very short phases, not even two days, just uh, three blocks or four blocks, uh, just for testing purpose to be able to switch quickly to the next phase. In reality, of course, these phases are much longer. As so for me, that the proposal phase will be something like three weeks, and then the voting the blind vote three days, probably the vote reveal two or three days, and then the vote result. So let's uh, make a compensation request. There are many more proposals what you can do, but we want to focus on the main use case, which is making a compensation request and voting. Uh, in other videos, we will cover all the other details. So you add your name, whatever, and the link to the GitHub issue uh, for Testing on testnet, we are not creating GitHub issues. You can either use an existing one or just use the URL of the general uh, compensation. <coughs> uh, here are on the issues are all the compensation requests. And <coughs> at the moment, we don't have a, a verification for the link, so you only can type in some text as well. Uh, so it, it's irrelevant in future, of course, that has to be the link to your compensation request where all the details and people can read up why you're asking the money. From here, they don't see why you, whatever, let's say I want 10,000 BSQ, uh, when you would not provide enough information why you want uh, to issue 10,000 BSQ to yourself, you would get uh, rejected probably. So all the content is basically dele uh, <coughs> delegated to another platform, uh, yeah, to another 
uh, representation platform what we're using uh, we're using github for this and yeah and then you make a proposal there's a small fee of two psq as we have seen and uh, the psq always require comp uh, confirmed transactions so when you have done a transaction like now and you go to the psq wallet under transactions you just see there is a transaction but you don't know uh, which type of transaction because as long as it's not in the blockchain the system is not validating the transaction because that's maybe that comes in future but that's quite complex so we are creating one uh, one new block that's usually done by the mine of course and it takes uh, roughly 10 minutes <clears throat> so now we see it was a fee for this compensation request and uh, <clears throat> take note that uh, this transaction will become later the issuance transaction and it will change the text and the amount but at the moment we have only paid the fee and this 10,000 BSQ what we want to issue is just sitting there idle and at the moment it's not BSQ because nobody has voted on this so we are still in the proposal phase let's move over to the blind vote phase uh, create a few more blocks to enter the blind vote phase now or maybe some other users uh, yes <coughs> want to vote on this so you can either vote wait, uh, move a little bit you can vote directly here or reject it or ignore it or again here let's say he's accepting it and whatever amount he want to put in uh in as his uh, weight, as his voting weight, we see here that the weight is at the moment zero because I uh, started here new. Once the contributor has earned already BSQ in the past, you will see the, all the BSQ from your uh, previous earned, uh, yeah, the voting weight from your previous earned BSQ. So let's say he votes with uh, 200,000 BSQ. He has a lot of BSQ and put all this in. <clears throat> and again, the transaction is published, but it's not, um, it's unknown which type of transaction it is, only after the next, uh, with the next confirmation, it's visible there. Let's see if we still can vote. Uh, I think we are, no, we are already in the last block here. <clears throat> uh, so here it's uh, just one block where you can do the voting in this development setup. So now in the vote reveal, <clears throat> I said that's very important that. To be online because here you don't need to do anything but as we have seen the application has created now this vote reveal transaction which just basically carries the secret key so that the other peers can decrypt your vote and you cannot vote anymore here so that's this blind vote concept you have one phase where you do the voting and then the second phase where you're revealing your voting where uh, you make it readable to uh, to everybody else and now we are entering the vote result phase so when you're uh, on the governance in vote result you can see now the details uh, i mean here was just one vote uh, which was accepted and yeah you can read all the details you can browse to the github issue and so on and you can see who has voted with which stake and so on so that was a very brief overview about the voting i just took quickly how it is now Alice, also here, uh, she has done the, the request. And yeah, uh, show you this here, that's important. This transaction, which has been before this uh, minus two BSQ for the voting fee, and before it was the, uh, the title here, the fee for compensation request, it now has changed to compensation request issuance because the same transaction is now, uh, interpreted as an issuance transaction because uh, you got voted okay one transaction outputs which was sitting idle to become bsq is now bsq and you have basically issued uh, 10,000 bsq to yourself minus the two bsq on fees that's why it's here 9998 uh, and yeah that's it basically and when she would make a new request with a new voting let's do again just Alice. And I have a few questions also. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just uh, jump quickly to the voting just to see their meritocratic approach with. So when she would vote now, of course, she can vote on her own proposal as well. <coughs> she will see she has earned 10,000 BSQ. 
it's already a few blocks away from the time when she has earned it. <clears throat> so she has already lost a little bit of her weight. The 10,000 is only at the same block, basically, when it was issued. And a few blocks after, it's already a little bit lower. After two years, it's zero. And that's her weight. Uh, and she cannot change it. That's always with every every time when she earns her BSQ, this value gets higher. And that will be always added to her voting state. So when she only votes with 1,000 BSQ, she will have in total uh, uh, 10, 10, 1,100 uh, BSQ, basically, as a sum of those two. Yeah, that's the very basic overview about the how to do a compensation request and how to do the voting uh, in the application. So, shall I ask some questions now? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I maybe I stop yes. screen sharing, but we can go back okay. if we need it. That's great. Uh, so you mentioned right now the stakeholders are not uh, able to see the reason for a, a specific compensation request amount uh, because they only see the link but yes. in the mainnet there will be more detailed information available so that stakeholders don't have to go to check out each link yeah exactly so it's like we're doing now <coughs> uh, i can show it maybe i'll do it with screen sharing again one second At the moment, we are using in GitHub here. This are uh, in uh, uh, bisc.network compensation, also github.com, bisc network compensation issues. <laughs> there are, as at the end of the month, when people are starting to make their requests, there are all the requests for this month. We see it here under the closed ones for the last month. For instance, uh, maybe I'll show my own one. That was a very big one because that was including most of the DAO work. <laughs> Usually, it's, it's lower amounts and uh, and you are basically describing it up to you how deep you go with description, the more information you provide, and the more the easier it is for other contributors to evaluate your work, uh, the better chances you have uh, to get uh, accepted. Uh, so basically, you should have links to yeah to some documentation of your work. So when you just say I've done, I've done great stuff for BISC and ask ten thousand BSQ and have no link, you will not get accepted. And people can discuss there and so on. We wanted to keep uh, all this out of the application because that's easier to yeah to use existing platforms and so on. And uh, yeah, and and people can read this and can evaluate afterwards if this request is worth it or not. And the way how of course there's a lot of connected question. How much you should ask when you contribute? The, and many people have this problems. Yeah, I've done this and this for the for BISC and I have no clue how much I should ask. Should I ask for 500 BSQ, should I ask for 2000 BSQ? And the short answer is uh, estimate the value, what it has added to BISC. And it's more like, it, yeah, it, how to get to this value is a little bit difficult, of course. But basically we have similar models in the real world. When you work as a freelancer for a company and you're doing whatever job, you usually don't get paid per hour because the company don't mind if you work 10 or 20 or 50 hours. They are only interested in the results. So when you're providing some whatever software and the software works great and everything is fine, probably you get a good amount of money for this. And when you were fast with this, yeah, you're lucky when you were very slow and whatever. It, it's the result which counts. And people are used to this from the freelance work that it's, it's the normal model there that basically you get a fixed sum for your work. I mean, different here is that there is no negotiation, usually no, no negotiation that you're upfront defining how much you work. You should start with small contributions and you are basically taking the risk when you are doing uh, some work that it gets rejected uh, when whatever, uh, when it doesn't fulfill the, um, the expectations of the stakeholders. Luckily, we have very few such cases. <coughs> But it's intentionally done that way that we don't get huge compensation requests for huge projects, which are very hard to estimate and take a lot of risk at the end for the project. We want to have baby steps. When you do a new application, make it as, as, as minimum as possible for starting, then make your first request. Maybe start with a concept before starting real work, and then the concept, the work on the concept get uh, accepted or not, 
And in the worst case, you have lost something. And that's the same in the freelance work. When you make a pitch for a company, you want to get a job, it's already work. And it, there's no guarantee that you get paid for it. So you have to take some risk. Everybody in BISC or every contributor has to take some risk because everybody is taking risk at the moment because the BSQ is not uh, on the market yet. And we want to continue this model. It's actually, I think, a positive to have some skin in the game. And it's a kind of filter. Uh, yeah, and then you're asked, and of course, you can use your hourly rate and your market value. And we want to orientate, we want to pay market rates, basically. Also, we don't want to pay lower because it's an open source project and uh, people are motivated with altruistic uh, motivations or whatever. Uh, we think that when you provide professional work and we're only interested in high quality professional work, then you should get paid the same like you would get paid by Google or in a big company. And uh, so the easiest for you when you're professional or yeah, who are used to, who know, you usually know your market rate more or less than your market value. And it's usually connected with your hourly rate. So when you work, when you're a developer and you're working 20 hours on some part and you have a rate of whatever, $100 an hour, yeah, then you're summing up this and you get the value. And then, of course, it depends on their stakeholder if they see this value. And there is no guarantee that uh, the stakeholders see that this has this value, but I think it's a good guidance at the end, which helps you. Okay, and uh, just going back to the uh, to the app, uh, just had a few questions. Hmm. Um, so, when you uh, create a proposal, um, it becomes a transaction, and it's recorded on the Bitcoin blockchain. That, that's how I understood it, right? It's yeah, it's yeah, uh, but it's just a kind of proposal transaction uh, and which will become the issuance transaction uh, upon the approval of this yeah. request. Uh, and then the, there, are, uh, there is a fee for the proposal. Um, how is the fee determined? The fee is, uh, <clears throat> as all these parameters of the DAO, like all these fees and some other, how long these uh, phases take, they are, uh, they are starting with a hard-coded value and they can be changed with every voting round. You can uh, vote on changing those parameters. There are many already. And like the fee for voting can be changed and then the next cycle, this new fee will be used. <clears throat> and the fee at the beginning are very low at the moment, something like two BSQ. So with the current, we, yeah, at the current, we just say that one BSQ is $1. Nobody knows the real value, but we need to have a kind of like a consensus that everybody is on the same table. And when people are doing their requests that not one is saying, yeah, I think it's $10 and the other thing, no, I think it's like 50 cent, then the amount of BSQ what they request would be very different. So we need to have a kind of like a consensus. And because nobody knows, we just have a rough estimation and about this $1. <laughs> So with this current one dollar evaluation of one BSQ, uh, the fee is two uh, two dollar, which is yeah very low, and it's intentionally that it has some cost. It shouldn't be free because uh, it's yeah it creates some load for the network, and it mainly it creates uh, costs for the other contributors. When you make a compensation request or any proposal, it takes attention for the other to validate it to make their mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, to verify if this request were is is worth to be accepted or not. So, and we yeah, and I think fees are a good model to have a regulation element to to react when we would see that it develops in the wrong direction. And those who care about BISC, they shouldn't care about to lose two dollar on fee because mm -hmm. it's basically a, a management function of doing voting is like a manager in a, in a company who has to make right decisions. It's not fun, it's, it's work. You have to uh, investigate to, to find the right decision and so on. Okay, and the uh, voting cycle consists of four phases, right? Proposal, phase, blind vote, uh, vote reveal, and vote result. And so yeah. for each phase, uh, it's a separate transaction? Uh, uh, no, or, so the phases are just uh, are determined in blocks, <clears throat> but uh, you can, so you, 
uh, you don't have to do anything anywhere. When you're passive, yeah, you just watch it. When you are contributors, you make a proposal, but that doesn't mean that you need to vote. And when you are uh, want to vote, that doesn't mean that you need to be a contributor. You can buy BSQ on the market and do only voting without contributing. So they are basically independent. Often they overlap. Usually the contributors are the, uh, the one who will vote. I mean, they should vote on their own request at least to get a little bit support from that. And and yeah, and only when you do some action, when you make a proposal, a transaction is created. Technically, the transaction is kind of like a time stamping. The, uh, the complex data, what we are yeah, broadcasting in the network, that's peer-to-peer -peer network data in the BISC peer-to-peer -peer network, but this is connected with the Bitcoin uh, transaction to have the security and everything to make it verifiable. And the same is with the blind vote and the vote reveal. So they are basically, when you, you do everything what I've done in, in that uh, example, making a request, doing a vote, making a vote, yeah, and then the vote reveal, then you have uh, three transactions, uh, one for this uh, proposal, then one for the blind vote, then one for the vote reveal, and at the vote result, when you have become uh, accepted, then your uh, proposal transaction becomes this issue, as it's just, it's the same transaction, it just becomes interpreted as the issuance transaction because yeah, the network can see that your proposal has been accepted and this output where you want to pay yourself the BSQ is now real BSQ. Okay, and the voting weight uh, is, you, you mentioned that it's, uh, we talked about it in the previous video, it's determined by the amount of stake and also the past contributions. So, exactly, so yeah. reputation. Uh, is there a specific uh, ratio or like? It's just the uh, sum. Ah, uh, the uh, sum. Yeah, the sum of your earned BSQ, and that sums up. When we would ignore this decay, which makes it a little bit more complicated, then it's just a sum of all the BSQ what you have earned in the past. And but the again, weight is given more to the reputation, or no? Uh, the weight is just oh, okay. a sum of both. So, okay. Uh, it gives automatically when you are a contributor, you have earned ten thousand BSQ in the past, and you have not sold it. Then you have in total twenty thousand BSQ what you can put on weight because you have the ten thousand what you have earned. You can sell it on the market or you can use it for voting, and you have the ten thousand this kind of like from reputation. And if, yeah, because it gets added up, you have in total twenty thousand BSQ. When somebody has vote to 10,000 BSQ on the market, here's only 10,000 BSQ. So your weight is the double uh, uh, compared to one who is uh, only buying it on the market. So that's the relation uh, between yeah, pure stake-based uh, influence and the reputation and the meritocratic-based influence. Okay, and um, so, does the stakeholder does the stakeholder need to enter the amount of BSQ he or she holds, or is it entered automatically? Is it going to be entered? Uh, no, he can. Uh, one second, I think I cannot vote to anymore now. Um, yeah, you, you can see it. Or uh, no, I still can vote. Uh, he can see it. You can see it here. Uh, so it's empty by default. You see the maximum available balance. That's what you have in your wallet. Here I have one and a half million BSQ because that's this test environment. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> you can spend all your BSQ what you have in your wallet, but then it's locked up until the vote. In the vote reveal, it gets unlocked again. But in these two, three days, uh, you cannot use it. So probably you don't want to spend 100% of your BSQ but whatever amount and the smallest amount, you cannot spend one BSQ because there's a technical limitation of 5.46 uh, uh, BSQ, which is 546 Satoshi. That's the smallest amount which is accepted by the Bitcoin network to um, well, as the dust limit. <clears throat> so you cannot uh, use less, but that's the smallest amount uh, what you can use for voting. Are uh, and the maximum is what you have in your wallet. Okay, and also uh, the voting cycle is going to be uh, every month, right? 
uh, roughly month. every month. Yeah, <clears throat> because we use the blocks as the as the um, unit for the time, <clears throat> because that's yeah. Otherwise, it would become all much more complicated. <clears throat> People have different computer times, and yeah, they're not in sync. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, because nobody knows how long the next block will take, it's roughly 10 minutes, but there's no guarantee. Uh, we will not be exactly with this month. So you have, you will see uh, the dates here. So when you go to the dashboard and governance, you see how long the blocks are, uh, how long it will take. As in testnet, it's longer than already. And which blocks and here uh, the date more or less of the estimation when the this phase will be over and when the next phase will start. Of course, these estimations are not exact because of this um, non-deterministic uh, block time, but you can orientate yourself. We will, of course, in, the, <coughs> in Slack and on our, uh, yeah, in the forum and so on, we will send out reminders. You probably will add it to the mobile notification um, feature that you get a notification that a new phase has started, especially the vote reveal is important that you not forget to be online there because uh, otherwise your vote will be not valid and not counted. Yeah. That's a great idea. I think it's very hard to keep track of the time. Yeah. I mean, we assume that most of contributors have the application running anyway. Yeah. A few, every few days at least, but of course there are contributors who will not have this and so on. So it's important to, to have some tools to help them to not forget about this. And why is the proposal phase going to be three weeks? It's, uh, it's just, I mean, we oriented basically on this monthly cycle, what, uh, what's uh, used everywhere in companies. People are used to this and I think it doesn't make sense to change it completely to somebody else, something else. <laughs> So that was the main, I think it works for most people. They are used to this to get a monthly payment to pay. They have to pay their uh, their rent uh, every month as well. So everything is kind of synchronized with this monthly cycle. And then we thought, okay, how to, I mean, it doesn't, we don't need two weeks for voting because I mean, basically uh, people come together to their voting. We don't want to have too short with one day because maybe you're, on holiday and traveling and you cannot do the voting. So two or three days should be enough to have the chance to be online and uh, do your voting and the three weeks for a proposal. Most people will do probably their proposal at the end of the phase because yeah, they want to wait to summarize everything what they've done in this month. But um, yeah, and that's the current system like we're doing it now also. Okay. And um, you mentioned that so if the uh, proposal, compensation request proposal is approved, this, the transaction will turn into the issuance transaction. But what happens if the proposal is not approved? Yeah, then it uh, stays Bitcoin. And you will see, maybe I go back to screen share. Uh, if you like, I can demonstrate a little bit more advanced. Maybe I don't want to get too much distract because there are many, we can make follow up videos where we go into all these details. Uh, it's just that, yeah, you will see then some extra feature where you can withdraw your Bitcoin out to your Bitcoin wallet. So in BISC, you have two separate wallets. One is the normal Bitcoin wallet, and you always need to have Bitcoin for paying the mining fee for those transactions as they are normal Bitcoin transactions technically. And then you have your BSQ wallet. So when you are trying to issue yourself BSQ and it fails because you get rejected, this uh, output, this transaction output, which should become BSQ stays Bitcoin. And then at this moment, you get it uh, displayed in the UI. You have some Bitcoin Satoshi sitting here. Do you want to send it out to your Bitcoin wallet? Because yeah, you cannot use it directly in the BSQ wallet. Um, it's more an exceptional case. We have very, I don't remember even one case, but maybe there have been one or two cases where we have rejected uh, proposals. And mostly it happens already in this phase when people are doing their requests, there can be some discussions and there have been sometimes, some, sometimes mostly it was confusion and people didn't know about this $1, one BSQ. They made their own estimation and thought, I think it's one cent. And then they requested 100,000 BSQ for something where they wanted to request something like $1,000. And of course, mm -hmm. then there was some discussion to explain this and then they changed it. 
or sometimes they yeah sometimes was uh, didn't find consensus that uh, it was hard for them to find their estimation and it required a little bit discussion most often it's that they're requesting too low and then other people tell them hey feel free to ask for more i think uh, your your work has had much more value like this uh, 200 psq what you ask for uh, feel free to, to increase it and yeah so you mentioned earlier that uh, they can calculate the amount of the compensation request uh, based on the market value or uh, on the amount how much value the, uh, the work added to the project which is a little harder i think yeah so but it's, maybe they have the uh, hourly rate yeah uh, so how they do it internally or you as a contributor that's basically completely up to you for BISC itself, uh, you cannot make a request where I say, I work 20 hours and have this rate and I want this amount. That that will be probably requires uh, changes because uh, that's the wrong model how to, to request. You can do it internally and maybe, you, I think you shouldn't even uh, post it publicly. The amount, you can do it like uh, Pedro has done it for the design work. Uh, internally has calculated uh, with his hours and his market rate. But for the request, he just had all the elements, what he has done, all the work, and then everybody has seen it. It's a huge, uh, yeah, it was a huge part of work. <coughs> and uh, and then he comes up to the sum, and you can separate it when it's big amounts. It's good to have it separated and say, okay, uh, there, there, whatever, when it's a piece of software, you start with the architectural design and then with whatever, prototyping and so on, and you can split this up. So it becomes a little bit easier for other to to understand. Like when you just say I want eighty thousand BSQ, then it becomes difficult. Why eighty thousand? Why not sixty thousand? Why not hundred thousand? And mm -hmm. but that's yeah. But your for you as a contributor, of course, it's difficult to say what's the value. And like I mean, like my contribution with the BISCA, what's the value of the DAO for the DAO? Without this work, it would have zero value because nobody could trade the tokens at the end. So it wouldn't make sense to say the real value for the DAO because that would be yeah, very, very high in that case. <clears throat> and some other, when somebody finds a very critical bug or so, I mean, this value can be a few hundred thousand when you would apply, it's very difficult sometimes. So at the end, I think it's a mix of this traditional model, but it has to be, we don't want to get in the mode that people are doing work by hour and it doesn't add value. And that happens often in companies. Some people are doing negative work. It would be better for the company when these people would not work for the company and they get paid per hour with their rate and they are not adding value. We don't want to get in this direction. So, that's so, so it's the result of the work that counts. It's the actual product or whatever exactly. you have produced that counts. But also when you calculate how much to ask for, uh, you can, I assume that all these different calculations more or less match if you say like this is the amount of uh, time I have put into the yeah. work, but also this is the the value of the work now. It's hard to calculate yeah. like what will, how much value it will be in the future, but you can use it from diff uh, approach from different angles and then yeah, I mean I can give one. <clears throat> well, I don't want to get too much lost in details, but. Uh, <coughs> An important thing is that, yeah, as it has to be value for the user, at, for the end user. And of course, to improve their, uh, some very low level technical stuff has at the end or, uh, value for the user, even if he doesn't see it directly. When the build process gets improved, that the user don't see this, but uh, it's a part for creating the binary for the user. And of course, the binary has the value for the user. So it can be a very a more abstract level, but uh, it, we, we don't, uh, pay for work which is not available yet. So when somebody is building whatever software which is not ready to use, it's not up for compensation. When he has made a concept for this and the concept is documented and it's basically the first step, okay, that's a value because with this concept, even if that person is not continuing to work on it, somebody else can work on it. And it's, a, it's on the roadmap to a final uh, uh, product for, the, for, for BISC. And yeah, it, I think that's the right uh, mental model to think about it. It has to be 
or something visible to to other for uh, for evaluating. So you have to have some either document, some code, some video, whatever you're doing. There need to be something just to do for onboarding. For instance, we basically don't pay. I mean, it can be exception, whatever, but that's basically a private agreement. And when I say, okay, I, I really need this developer because we searched for two years for a developer and now I found them. And uh, I mean, there's a big competition uh, for good developers on the market and I need to pay them for onboarding even if he cannot deliver in the first weeks because it's a complex uh, area and so on. But that's uh, basically my private <laughs> uh, deal. Uh, the DAO doesn't pay for the, for onboarding or for anything. It's just pay for value added to the project. That's, uh, okay, so then uh, we kind of want, still want to have some kind of balance uh, between how... So if someone is... Um, so it's better to break the work into smaller chunks, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. so that you can show... Uh, to the community what you have done uh, and yet re rewarded or compensated for that part. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of hard to incentivize someone to work on something for half a year and then wait for, for him or her to be yeah. compensated during that time. It's much better to kind of have, break the project into smaller, more finished mm -hmm. or uh, semi-independent chunks and then exactly. uh, be compensated for that. Yeah, okay. I think it's a risk reduction for both sides. You as a contributor, when it doesn't work out well for whatever reason, uh, then the worst case, you have lost one month of work and you didn't get a compensation for this. And for the BISC DAO, it's that we are not uh, yeah, putting effort in stuff which will maybe never work. And it's a very usual thing in big companies there often the way how the company is going down, that they have too much money and then are not doing enough due diligence and spending huge amounts of big works, which at the end are bad projects and will never go out. And that can be very uh, yeah, bad development. And you also mentioned that contributors can vote on their own compensation requests, right? Yeah. Uh, and what's the reasoning behind that? It's mainly because we cannot avoid it. <laughs> so it would be, at least I don't have an idea how to because you can be very anonymous. I mean, it's intentional that by default, you don't have a lot of privacy with the DAO and so, but maybe it's another topic. I don't want to get lost in this because yeah, when you are, you have your GitHub account and uh, it's all on the blockchain so it's connected and so on. But if you really want to, you can do, you can make a anonymous uh, email account and, and register with this with GitHub and then you're an anonymous identity on GitHub and connect this with this. And even when you want to separate the different roles, which you do in uh, in BISC or uh, different uh, compensation requests for every month. So you can start over every time with a new identity when you want to go extreme. Uh, but um, <clears throat> yeah, because that's possible, we cannot avoid it anyway, because you could, as a contributor, create such an anonymous identity and. A, another anonymous identity is voting then. And so, yeah, it's a feature to have this uh, possibility to be anonymous. It's important for censorship resistant. And, uh, and because it's possible that you can vote on your own requests when we would avoid it, when you're the normal user, then we could maybe try to avoid it. But then we would give a benefit to those who make it a little bit more complicated for themselves and they're abusing this uh, uh, rules. And uh, yeah, I think it's then better that we have by default everybody. We assume that everybody is voting accepted on their own request. And it's not a big risk because I mean, this maturity attack risk that, yeah, what if the main stakeholders and their big, uh, yeah, the main contributors are then just paying themselves. Yeah, when they are, doing bad work and paying too much themselves that DAO will fail and their investment is gone and somebody will fork the project. I mean, it's basically when their main, at the main stakeholders have become main stakeholders because they have done a lot of work in the past and the this project wouldn't be where it is when this work would have been completely bullshit and when they would have just run after the big money and try to scam other people. I mean, then this would look different, <laughs> would uh, have done an ICO and whatever. So the BISC DAO incentivizes people to basically uh, 
kind of cooperate and to uh, not try to not abuse the system by just buying a lot of BSQ and then kind of yeah and I think and this natural reputation as I said already <clears throat> when somebody has earned over two years uh, 300,000 BSQ there's just some reason I mean like in Bitcoin when you compare it to Bitcoin there is I mean people who uh, like Greg Maxwell or <clears throat> Others who have worked a lot on, on the system, I mean, they have built up reputation and that has some value. You cannot ignore this completely. Of course, there's no guarantee that they don't become uh, one day after the other scammers and do whatever shady things. And of course, that happens, like some core contributors have turned out the bad apples at the end. Uh, but they have left the project now, it has cleaned out. And when the whole project only consists of so, and we see many altcoins which are that way, basically, that the people who are running the project at the end doing exit scams or whatever. Okay, but nobody's, it, the project is dead after a while. It's, uh, so it cleans up uh, automatically itself, I think. Or, uh, yeah. And with the fork risk and with the fork possibility, I think you have this kind of like insurance that uh, the main stakeholders cannot go too much in the wrong direction because otherwise they get punished by the market and the community and their, um, by this fork risk, basically. Okay, uh, I think that there's a lot of information that we've covered in this video. And uh, do you think that we should talk about uh, talk more about other things that we have missed, or a little bit more? I uh, just added a few practical uh, hints how to to use the BSQ uh, system with Testnet as one problem to start. Uh, yeah, to start it, you download it or uh, the latest version. You can switch to testnet in their uh, settings uh, menu uh, and then restart and it's completely separated to mainnet. I talked already before I, uh, in the other video, but maybe some people who have not seen the other video, I repeat it. And then, yeah, you're starting up with testnet. You need some testnet Bitcoin. You can get it at some forces. We have on the forum, there is a link where all this is described and the, and the links to those uh, web pages. And you need some BSQ for voting. You can either buy it on the market from other contributors who have already some testnet BSQ, or you just post your address, uh, your receiving address uh, in the forum or in Slack, and some others will send you some BSQ. And then you can do, yeah, you can play around. You cannot, it's testnet coins, so they have no value. You cannot, when you make mistakes or whatever, uh, it has no real consequences. You can do all kind of, proposals are also the more advanced ones and learn about them. We will make more videos to go more into details of those. And you can do the voting and you can uh, see how how the BISC DAO works in practice. And it's very important that we get as many as people, especially those who have contributed in the past to BISC, who will be receivers of Genesis BSQ tokens. They are interested that this token will have some value and when the DAO would have a major Back and we have, would not have discovered this in the testing phase, they will be directly affected because the BSQ, what they receive, might have then a much lower value or no value at all. So it's very important that everybody should have be aware that they have their skin in the game. Uh, it's their BSQ which are, yeah, they want to become valuable. And now we are in the last, uh, in the last phase of the, um, of the project, basically, where we need this final test and we need a lot of different people, especially when there are developers who know very well the Bitcoin system, who, who are able to create crazy transactions and try to break that out, try to find consensus bugs. That's the highest, uh, the most important thing because that's the most dangerous bugs and the most complex also. And there are not too many people who are technically skilled to be able to do this and to understand uh, these complex uh, relations. So when anybody uh, is watching this who has the skill set for this, he's super welcome. There's also a bounty program where different types of bugs like this consensus bugs are the most valuable. So when you find a real consensus bug, you can earn up to 10,000 BSQ, which is quite a lot. That's basically roughly the, the salary of, of, the, of the contributors with the highest uh, salaries. And yeah, but those are really, uh, difficult to find and difficult. Yeah, those are really valuable findings when somebody finds this. That's why we are offering really high uh, rewards for this. Other smaller bugs are 
we were at lower, it always depends. Uh, no hard guarantee how much you will earn, but of course, I'm interested to find those people and to keep those people. So uh, uh, when you find an important buck, we will pay you. And um, yeah, um, of course, help also to communicate. I mean, there's already uh, a few people who are focusing the efforts like we are doing now with these videos to uh, yeah to produce this content that people understand it. It's a completely new system on many areas, on the technical area, on their social area, on this organizational area. So we are doing quite challenging stuff and it requires time and effort to, for people to learn and to understand this. And now with the testnet, it's a great chance to, yeah, to play around to get a, a better understanding of the BISC DAO. Yes, and we are also going to include some links, relevant links, uh, below this video, so along with this video, so that to make it easier for you to find uh, that information. And if you are interested in involving, being involved in uh, communicating, um, I would be happy to talk to you more. And we are also very interested in people who are multilingual so that we can translate all that information into many, as many languages as possible. Yeah, great. Great. And uh, so maybe I can try to briefly summarize what we've covered. Not, not all the details, of course, but just the general info. So um, when a contributor uh, files a compensation request, uh, he or she uh, creates a proposal transaction uh, that um, is registered on the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, he or she need to, needs to pay a certain fee. And that it happens in the proposal phase, uh, which will last about two to three weeks uh, on a monthly voting cycle. And then once the compensation request is submitted, in the next phase, which is the blind vote phase, any stakeholder, in, including the, that contributor, uh, can vote. Uh, and the voting weight is determined, um, is the sum of the stake, which is the amount of BSQ held, and reputation. And uh, then in the next phase, in the vote reveal phase, so the blind vote, uh, as the name suggests, is done anonymously. And the vote reveal phase uh, is where you will see the, um, the results. I'm actually sorry, I'm confused about the vote yeah. reveal and vote results. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the vote reveal phase, everybody who has voted will publish this extra transaction oh. where they are yeah. revealing the secret key for decrypting the blind vote. But there is no, the reason why we need an extra phase is because there, we cannot say at this block, everybody has to be online and do this. So it takes yeah. some time and we are collecting. So over this, in this phase, your basic the application will see already and could read already some votes, but not all. And at the end of the phase, when the result phases, we basically say now it's over. When you have not been online, then your vote will not be counted. And all the votes which have been revealed, we will take them and create the summary. In the UI, we don't show the preliminary summary of one, two, three, four, five votes over time, which get revealed, because it would not really add much value for the user and it would be confusing. Uh, technically, it would be possible. You could already see, ah, Manfred has voted that and that and that, but I don't see what uh, the other person has voted. So it, you don't get any consensus out because you have to wait until yeah, everybody has uh, revealed their vote and we cannot wait forever because maybe some persons are forgetting or whatever. So we have basically this deadline uh, after two or three days when you have forgot to be online at this time, bad luck, you, are, you have lost basically your voting um, fee for a vote which is not uh, went into the, into the uh, end result. And in the end result, then all the valid votes are uh, used for the calculation. Great, thank you. And then uh, upon the vote result, uh, 
the proposal transaction will turn into the it's the same transaction that this will turn into issuance transaction if the compensation request is approved and then the uh, contributor gets PSQ. Uh, if it's not approved, then uh, there's a complicated process. Uh, but we yeah, don't have to go into not, Yeah, it's not complicated, it but it's just oh, it's an additional process. Yeah. Yes, it's an additional and process. This yes. conversion, also, it's a little ah, bit... Yeah. Uh, so technically, it's the same transaction. It's just conceptually, yeah. it's something different. First, you make the request. So conceptually, mm -hmm. for you, it's something different. And after the voting, this has become an issuance. But technically, yeah. it's only one transaction, which doesn't change at the end. And we talked about it also in the uh, past video uh, on the technical, technical aspect of BSQ tokens, uh, how the BSQ is on the BSU creation and issuance and things like that. So uh, also the way to determine how much to ask for in the compensation request is done by uh, figuring out how much value uh, the work that you have done uh, uh, produced is, uh, adds to the, to the BISC project and it's, you can also calculate the uh, the using the market rate and also hourly rate, but for yourself mostly. And it's better to uh, break down the a big project into smaller uh, chunks parts that can be completed and shown to the community, so that they can vote on that on that work. Um, and um, I think that's it for me. Yeah, perfect. Uh, great summary, like always. <laughs> Thank you. So, anything else, or that's uh, it? No, I think that's uh, <clears throat> was good. Maybe we make a follow-up video <clears throat> where we are uh, explaining all their details because I've seen already some contributors are very interested to play around with the other more advanced features and. They are, require a little bit of background. They are not so obvious and they are not documented well somewhere. So I think to have one video to explain all the other features like the asset listing fee, the, uh, the, the bonding and so on. The, you can make a proposal for removing an asset. You can uh, confiscating a bond uh, or make a proposal for confiscating a bond. Uh, so it probably would be good to have one video where we are uh, covering all those uh, elements. Great. Then uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you found it useful and valuable and uh, we look forward to uh, having more videos on this topic and if you are interested in uh, any specific topic please uh, let us know on this forum or you can also join us on the BISC Slack channel. Thank you very much. Thank you Manfred. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.